Happy Sabbath. Happy, Happy day. day. Happy day. Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Uh, you're welcome to this Sabbath as we start this song service. And before we start, let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day that you've given unto us. Thank you for the blessings of life. Protect us throughout the day and let us have a wonderful Sabbath. For this is my humble prayer. I do pray trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath once again. Happy, Happy day. day. We would like to welcome you to our worship service today. So we will start our service with song number 20, Mungu wetu yeye mwamba. Mungu wetu yeye mwamba kimbili otaabuni msaada penye shida ulio karibu sana mwamba wetu kutupumzisha yukivu Join us as we sing the next song, song number 70, Wapenzi Wabwana. And I love stanza two because it says, Wasimbe wa wasio amini, watoto wa mungu ndio, watoto wa mungu ndio, waimbao chini. Join us as we sing together because we are children of God and we know what God has done for us even throughout this period. Wapenzi wabwana Wapenzi wabwana Ijera hayedu Imbeni nyimbo za raha Imbeni nyimbo za raha Za ibada See you. 
watoto wa Mungu ndio watoto wa Mungu ndio wa imba ochini wa imba ochini twenda zayuni mji mzuri zayuni twenda Tufika mbinguni kwenye utukufu kwenye utukufu twenenda zayuni mji mzuri zayuni twenenda juu zayuni ni maskani ya Mungu twaoka pomona masumbu kabasi huwa maji ya uzima huwa maji ya uzima ana Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I hope you are all well. We've woken up well. We thank the Lord for this Sabbath which he has granted unto us. Before we start, I like us to pray. Let us believe and pray. Our kind and loving Father, we come unto you this Sabbath, God. We thank you for the gift of life, Jehovah. We thank you for enabling us see this Sabbath. As we're going to start this Sabbath, God, may you send your Holy Spirit to guide us through the day. Through Jesus Christ I pray and believe. Amen. Today we are going to get our scripture reading from the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 and it reads In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was with the beginning of God. Verse 3 All things were made by him. and without him was not anything made that was made chapter 4 in him was life and the life was the light of men amen may god bless the reading i'm now going to welcome maxwell for our mission reading i hope you'll all be blessed hello viewers up sabbath i believe you are well from whichever place you are watching us from i want to welcome you to today's service more specific our sabbath school program and i'm here to give to give you a deep analysis of today's mission hope you'll be blessed and my name is maxwell okay today being the 23rd day of may 2020 our mission is coming from finland and the title of our mission today is demons and, and death and here we are going to talk about a a person by the name timo flink who is 45 years of age Lena abruptly turned to her friends who are called Timo and Aneli as they were during their bible study and they were they were at, at, at that time they were in their house in in Lena's apartment so Lena said that I have a bad feeling and I want us to pray about about it so the the, the three university student decided to kneel down and have some word of prayer as as they were praying a tall dark creature 
appeared in the room and went to where Anneli was was praying. So Anneli was frightened. Why is it me that this creature is moving towards to? And before before even a while, another light creature also came in. And when it came in, it chased away the dark the dark creature. So the dark creature the dark creature went and and stood by the door side but since the light creature had taken full control it was unable to come back after after 10 minutes the dark creature went away so when 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 the three students uh, finished their prayer and everything was at calm they decided to narrate of the events they had gone through and lena what lena could remember is the encounter and the experience between the light creature and the dark creature while timo said that he only remembers the the shadow that struck on the floor and he could only see the white shadow and the dark shadow I mean uh, while this was happening aneli decided to remain silent and didn't say a word after after a while Anneli decided to break her silence and said yes she has been attacked with this thing called spiritism and the evil spirit for a while and he, she went ahead and said that although all this was was happening god was still in his side and that's a big amen to this after after some time Anneli decided to get baptized and that's how she forgot about the supernatural beings and he, he began to live a normal life now we are back to Timo who is the main guy in this story. So Timo was 45 years of age and and it was his first time he encountered the controversy between Jesus Christ and and the and Satan. So he was one day he was sleeping and he couldn't have us a peaceful sleep. He woke up and it's like he was seeing something in the dark but he could not see what clear what clear it was so what he decided he decided to pray but while he was praying he had a voice saying you should not get you should not get baptized and he was wondering why you know at that time he was 45 years of age and he was an engineering engineering student a software engineering student to be specific so he said this voice is telling me not to get baptized, but yet I'm, I'm preparing myself to get baptized. He went on to pray and forgot about the incident and slept very well. So he said that nightmare experience did not stop him from, get, from getting baptized. After a while, he got baptized and further on we, we were told that he became an Adventist pastor. And that's an amen to that. So despite the fact that he was baptized, he still couldn't forget of the supernatural events he had in his mind, you know, such scenarios, such bad scenarios. So one day, him and three Adventist pastors decided to, to board a ship to go to a conference in Sweden, an overnight conference. So that day, Timu was, was not relaxed. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep at, at all. He decided to pray. But while he was praying, he had a demonic voice. He could sense something was bad, but he wasn't sure what is it. He just decided to pray about it and everything went on well. So in the morning while they were having their breakfast, a pastor came to his table and, and asked him, My friend, yesterday, what's, what was happening with you? Everything seemed not to be all right. So is, this pastor also added on and said that, I, I, I had you. You were not relaxed, and I decided the Holy Spirit ap appeared to me and told me to pray for you. So, so he prayed for Timo, and then another pastor also came, also came by and said, "You know what? You don't know what happened to me. I, I woke in the middle of of the night and had a sensation that I should have some warm breeze outside there. But while I was uh, outside there, I." I, I encountered a man who, who was on the deck and wanted to throw himself inside the sea. But then 
I saw that was not a good thing. I went and talked to the man and persuaded him not to throw himself inside. And I counseled him for about an hour and things on things went all right. So while these three now they were three in number. While they sat they they tried to to think of these experiences and they decided that they had happened for for the same t- in the same time simultaneously. And and by doing that they they realized that something was was not good because that was a nightmare experiences which was not usual to them. So Timo went ahead and said I, I, Timo now realized that this this great controversy between Jesus Christ and Satan is now real. So they 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 took up the challenge as it was and decided to pray about it and they said despite all the challenges Jesus al- always will win. We should not be afraid or be shaken by anything because we are winners in Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the end of the story. As I conclude, this mission story reminds me of a songwriter who wrote the song What a Friend We Have in Jesus. This man explains in his story the challenges he has been going through and he went ahead and told us despite the challenges he went through, he kept on praying and It reminds us of one thing. Whatever the situation in life, we should always take everything to God in prayer. Right now we are we are faced with a global pandemic. It's an opportunity for us to come together as Christians, as Adventists and take everything to God in prayer and through that we will all win this fight. Amen and hope you are, you are you are blessed with that. Thank you brother Maxwell for the mission reading. I hope we've learned something and we are all blessed. And before we go for our lesson discussion, I want to welcome you with me so that we can pray before we depart. Let us believe and pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you God. We thank you for the mission that you've had Jehovah. As we are going to start our lesson discussion, may you send your Holy Spirit to guide us till we finish. In Jesus name I pray and believe. Amen. Hamjambo watazamaji. Nachukua nafasi hii kushukuru Mungu kwa kutupa sabato njema ili tuweze kuwa hapa. Kabla hatujafanya lolote, ningependa tuweze kuomba. Tunaomba. Asanti mtakatifu baba yetu liye juu mbinguni. Tunashukuru na kuinua jina lako asubuhi hii njema ambao umetupa ili tuweze kupumzika tukitukuza jina lako katika sabato lako takatifu. Tunapoanza kujifunza lesoni Mungu wetu tunaomba uweze kutuongoza. Tunaomba uwepo wako kati yetu ha, le, sasa na hata mwisho katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye mwokozi wetu. Amen. Asanti. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you once again and also introduce to you the team of teachers that we have for today as we discuss lesson 8. My name is Lynette Kaunda and with me on my right is Pastor Felix Okeo. Pastor please say hi. Happy Sabbath. And on my left is our elder Jeremiah Mwenga. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Now We just want to go straight to lesson 8 and I would like to welcome Elda to take us through the introduction. A uh, good morning wherever you are, wherever you are listening. It's another Sabbath day that we want to go through our lesson study and discussion. And we invite every one of you to join us in this discussion uh, as we go through our Bibles to understand our creator. The lesson this time has been talking how to understand the Bible, how you interpret the Bible, the Bible context, how you can uh, interpret, how you can differentiate the verse versus the text and what it means. Today we are looking at uh, Genesis as a foundation of creation you cannot talk of creation without talking of genesis that's why in our lesson discussion today 
we are basing our discussion on uh, Genesis uh, uh, from creation, uh, from Genesis 1, how creation was done. We are also going to look at uh, how God did the creation. In our main co uh, text today, we are going to look at in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. That is in uh, John 1, verse 1 to 4. Uh, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. So when we're talking of creation, we are looking at what God is doing, and we are in fact going to look at the beginning. The question may arise here as we go through the lesson today. How many beginnings do we have? We have the beginning of yourself. When you first came to this world, there was a beginning of creation. And then uh, God, where do we put him? Where does he have a beginning? These are some of the things we shall discuss today so that we know where is the, which, how many beginnings do we have. So in this, uh, today, the chapter of Genesis as a foundation of what we are going to discuss is going to touch um, how God, as Godhead, did the creation. Here we find the nature of Godhead working in harmony as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you look at um, John 1, verse 1, 1 to 3, and the Hebrews 1, 1, you will find that the three in unison were united in creation. So the question may come when we talk of the beginning of creation, when we talk of creation, we are talking of where humanity began, how the world began. But then we have to understand the Akwamba, all that uh, creation, the first day of creation, what happened, and we shall cover all through up to the seventh day what happened all the uh, five, uh, seven days. So among the things we shall discuss today, uh, Genesis also introduces the Sabbath. The, the Sabbath as a main theme of what we shall discover uh, when God started to do creation. You can see that in the beginning, the Sabbath also comes from that same spot in that God, when he was doing creation, he also created the Sabbath. So you can see why the Sabbath is very significant uh, to human beings or to us. We also need to understand that from the beginning there were la no languages that we can say there was uh, this language or that language or there was a Hebrew. There is always some times when you find people talk about at uh, the uh, Sabbath of the Jews. The question will come here in our discussion today, were there Jews during uh, the creation? These are some of the questions we need to answer as we look through our study today. So we also have to have the nature of humanity and God's character as, we, as he does the creation. We shall also uh, connect it with at creation, human beings were made, the, uh, Adam and Eve were created, and marriage institution also started from that point. So these are some of the things that we shall look today, and then we see uh, after creation is finished, there is a promise that uh, uh, we, uh, human beings were given. Where were they put when the creation was done? These are some of the things we shall cover as uh, the teachers go through their lesson studies to discover this. So, in the beginning, I want to say that the beginning we are talking about is the beginning of man, or the beginning of creation. We should also understand, 
in, from Genesis 1.1 1, 1, that uh, in the beginning, when God says in the beginning, he's talking about in the beginning of creation. So God was there during the creation. Yeah, the Bible doesn't tell us uh, Kwamba, the beginning was with God. The beginning was started by God by, to create uh, life on earth. So that's why the lesson today is talking about what deep truths do we discover from this creation. In fact, the greatest question of philosophy regarding who we are, uh, we, why we are here, and how we got here, answer the first sentence of the Bible, that God created man. So we actually know, even without question, even the philosophers, when they are asked to say, where did the man come from? The Bible is answering it from the first sentence that uh, God created man. We also are created by God, an absolute point in time. This must mean that God existed prior to this beginning, is what we need to look at. Uh, that is, God existed before time was created and expressed, daily circles of evening and morning. So we will discover that even the days we are counting from Sunday to Saturday or from Sunday to Sabbath, these were set up during a creation week. So in the beginning, everything was done and completed. This absolute beginning is echoed and supported by other passages, which we shall look like John 1, 1 to, uh, 1 to 3, Hebrew 1, 1. We shall find that the Bible teaches that Jesus was agent of creation. So we can see in the beginning, Jesus was present. He actually did the creation, Walim. So the Bible says that all things were made through him and nothing was done, was made without him, without, without him if you look at John 1, verse 3. So through Jesus, he made the worlds because all things have their origin in Jesus in the beginning. So we can actually basically see that Jesus was actually uh, in the creator of all things. That's why the Bible says Jesus is God. Amen. So we shall look at some of these things as um, Walimu contributed um, uh, about this. So he ends up, if you look at the revelation, he says, I am Alpha and Omega. So who is this saying, I am Alpha and Omega? When you read Revelation, you find this a revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So he has been there. He will be there. He did the creation in the beginning. So in the beginning, man was made. So Walimu, what can you say uh, concerning uh, the origin of man? Now, thank you. Uh, we are finding that in conclusion, we have hope that in the end, Jesus will complete what he has begun. Yeah. And then, I just want to usher in the pastor with this question as he goes to Monday. What difference does it make to know that you were created by God? Imagine if you didn't believe that. And how different would you, have, you view yourself and others and why? So, Pastor, as you try to answer that question, you also take us to Monday, the yeah. days of creation. Thank you so much. It is important mm. and it's so much good to me to know that I'm created by God. Yes. I know of many, many philosophers, many people who talk about we coming from somewhere else. But me being a child of God is just too much and too great for me. And I know many of us nowadays believe that we were created. You know what is interesting? Even those people who don't believe in creation still say that we evolved from something. Meaning what we evolved from existed prior. And because that thing existed means there's somebody who brought it in. Now let me not dwell into that because we are running <laughs> out of time. Let me, let me come to the days of creation. And I want to start saying by saying that the days of creation are literal days. I know there are, there are cases in the Bible where a day means a, a year, mm -hmm. and a year means a day. But when we come to the days of creation, they are literal days, one day at a time. And something interesting again that I want us to understand is that God did the creation as its disposal. In other words, he may even decide to come in the morning and say, let there be trees. Mm -hmm. And once the trees existed, 
the, 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 the day's work is over. And so God finishes the day. And by the time he finishes, he said it was evening and morning, day three. And so it does not mean that God took a thousand, a year to create one thing. God took a literal day. And that's why you realize that all these days are important. Look at it from the day, day one. Day one, God comes in, does his work, finishes. Day two does we in three, it goes to day seven. So each day that God did his work, he made sure that it was one full literal day. And if you want to realize this again, we must understand that according to God, a day begins from evening sunset to another sunset. God's counting does not begin from midnight to the next midnight. After all, let's, let's, let's use simple English for us. Midnight means the night began at some point. We've gone half of the night. And so if we want to cheat ourselves that we want to count the days, at the midnight means we are counting after some time has gone. And this was brought by, 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 by a, a king at some point. I don't want to go into the details of this one because it is a, we'll, we'll discuss it for a long time. But what we want to understand today is God created everything in one day. Jesus was used in creation. And remember, at the beginning, the Holy Spirit was there. So the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were ex existing during the creation. And God made sure that creation was indeed done in each day. Now, let, let me read the last quote as I finish. Also, the literal nature of the day is taken for granted when God wrote with his own finger the fourth commandment, indicating that the basis of the seventh day Sabbath rest on the sequence was literal. So in other words, everything that we're doing is literal. So don't, don't wait that you want to go and worship after a thousand years because, or after one year because one year in prophecy may mean one day and one day in prophecy may mean one year. That is not here. In creation, it is a single day later on. So this is not prophecy? No, this is not prophecy. It's, it's a, a literal day. It's a reality. It's a reality of things. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. I think that past is very clear. Yeah, maybe I want to comment on okay. that. So when we look at uh, the days, somebody would ask a, a question, uh, Pastor, uh, come up. Uh, when God was doing the creation and naming days, right. uh, are you telling uh, us uh, that uh, it started on Sunday? Where did it start? Uh, uh, how does the Bible tell us uh, it was on Monday when it started creation? Elder, Elder what you're asking is okay. <laughs> you know, you know. literally, the days were not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the way yes. we have it. Yes. There it was, if you look at the Bible, yes. it was evening and morning, the first, first day. day. But God never leaves things unrevealed. Yes. He reveals everything. Yes. And so if you question the day, when was the first day, when was the second day, yes. we can still again answer ourselves from the Bible. Mm. Now if, if you look at, and I want us to look, look at this only so mm. that we understand. Yes. If you go to the book of, of, of uh, Matthew, it must be Matthew chapter 27. Yes, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now just look, at, just look at verse 1. It says, and uh, at this point is the beauty of using different translations of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because you go to King James Version, we'll tell you, early morning as the first day. Mm -hmm. Meaning the Sabbath is gone and the first day is coming, right? Yes. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Yes. That is King James Version. If you go to good news, good news now will tell you which is this first day we are talking about. Now good news says after the Sabbath, a Sunday morning was dawning. If, if, you, are, if you are a pupil and you, you, you are a student of study, you will realize that that good news answers the question of King James. King James says first day. Good news makes you to understand what is this first day we are talking about and it says on Sunday. Now from our literal days and our calendars, after Sunday, the next day is Monday. It only means if Sunday is the first day, therefore Monday becomes the Tuesday, the, the, the second day, and the seventh day now comes to be the Saturday. And that, that answers the question, which were literal days? After all, in, in the Hebrew language, in, in the Greek languages, we don't have Monday, Tuesday, we have other, other days. But English language, which we use as Kenyans and other, a lot of countries, we, we easily understand it. Okay, thank you. This takes us to the Sabbath and creation. Now, the Sabbath is mentioned as a very special day. 
But today, the Seventh Day Sabbath is heavily under attack in secular society and in religious communities. And that takes us back to the argument of when. When did Sunday come in? When did Monday come in? And then we, we realized that in the, attempt, in the attempted change of the calendar in many European countries, designating Monday as the first day of the week and Sunday as the seventh day of the week by the recent papal encyclical on climate change that calls the seventh day Sabbath the Jewish Sabbath. I think we've mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, the Sabbath was looked at as it is for the Jews. Right. Okay? Even but now I think people look at yeah, it as a Jew. Yeah, actually. it is way back in the Jewish culture that they kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus comes in, he is answering so many questions. Like in Mark 2:27, he is telling them the Sabbath was made for the good of man. Yes. So we don't have the Jewish Sabbath, what, but we have the Sabbath made for man. Yeah. Okay, then. And then the man was not, it, uh, it says that the Sabbath was made for the good of man and not man for Sabbath. What does that mean? You know, the Sabbath is not to enslave man, but it is to give man that joy and rest as a sign that there are three things that are mentioned here in Genesis. Eh? One, Genesis indicates three things that Jesus did after he created the Sabbath. One, he rested. And we are looking at the entire creation as God working. He is at work. And each and every day he finished creating one thing. He says he looks at it and he was pleased with it. And he blessed that day. But the only day that God blessed, sanctified is the Sabbath. So after resting... He blessed the seventh day. And then in the creation narrative, we find that even the animals were blessed. Because when he commands them to multiply in the sea and on the land, that was a blessing. And the same blessing is also given to man. Man is also blessed. And then the day is blessed. In the creation, animals are also blessed. And Adam and Eve are blessed. But the only day specifically blessed is the seventh day. And then third, God sanctified this day. That is, he made the day holy. We are talking about seven days, but one day is put apart as a holy day. It is a blessed day and is a day that God rested. And then when Jesus is answering the question of Sabbath, the Pharisees were actually putting him to test. And he was asking him, how come your followers are eating corn on Sabbath, isn't it? Then he is giving the answer. It is man, it is uh, the Sabbath was made for the good of man and not man for Sabbath. And again, we are seeing several blessings on the Sabbath. And then Revelation is concluding by telling us, fear God and praise his greatness. What is the greatness? The Sabbath is a seal. It is a seal between man and God that something very important was done to, to man. And then he's also saying that no other day receives these three designations. We don't see the first day of creating light as a blessed day. Neither do we see the second day as a blessed day. So these actions are repeated in the fourth commandment, though when God writes with his own finger and points back to creation as the foundation of the Sabbath. So what does this give us? Eh? <coughs> a blessed day, a holy day, which was set apart as that seal of a relationship between man and his creator. Any addition, Pastor? You know, you know what, what I want us to understand. <laughs> <laughs> what I want us to understand is it is, not, it is not you to design a day. You know, people have their days of worship. Sisi Sikuetu Yakuaburuni this day. That is their day. It's okay. Even myself, I can have my day for worship. That is my day. But remember, God has only one day. The challenge that. Let me, let me bring this point in. The challenge that. These are our other, 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 other 
the religions have. For example, the Muslims. The Muslims will ask you, if we are all believing in somebody called God, why do we have different days of worship? Okay? Muslims believe in one power of a God called Allah. And they all worship in one day, Friday. We call ourselves Christians. And Christians mean we believe in Christ. But all of us have our days of worship. Does it mean that Jesus sanctified two, three days? Or does it mean that we don't understand what the Bible says? The, the answer is simple. We can make our days. And I think that's where the challenge is. Everybody has his day. But remember, we have one day sanctified, blessed, and then set aside for worship. That is the Sabbath. And two, the war between God and cry and, and, and the devil is on worship. And if you realize the day that is being fought so much is the day of worship, the Sabbath. And I, I want you to look at this thing this way. And this I know will, will make you laugh, but it's interesting. The change of Sabbath did not start with the change of Sabbath. It started with the change of time. And I'll look at it this way. Sasaba. Mchana. What? Inandekwa aje kwa lugha ya kawaida. Inandekwa one. Inandekwa one. It is Sasaba. How can one become seven and seven become one? That's confusion. That is the same thing. It is the same change of days where day one becomes the Sabbath and the Sabbath becomes something else. So what the devil is doing is, he's telling you, we started with the time in calendar and in your watches, and now they, we can change the day the way we want. And we must be very careful that on the Sabbath, it remains Sabbath. The good thing is, Sabbath will remain Sabbath even if all of us are not worshipping on the Sabbath. And the days remain the same as uh, we have found out here. Yes. That uh, God says it was evening and it was morning. Morning. The they first were, day. Yes. And they call it the first day. So these things don't change. But uh, human beings have changed. That's it's where true. we have a it's problem. No. So I, I think as we conclude that area is that uh, if we don't recognize the Sabbath, we are not recognizing Jesus. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus said yes. here in Mark. If you, my, if, you, if you love me, you know me? John chapter keep 14, my, keep my 15. Commandments. Yes, keep my commandments. Thank One you. of the commandments is the Sabbath. <laughs> yes. So you cannot keep all the other commandments and then you won't run away from one commandment just because you don't love that commandment. <laughs> so you, you have missed all of it. You missed everything. <laughs> Creation and marriage. <laughs> Creation and marriage. This is the most controversial in today's society mm -hmm. because today... The man marry man, woman marry woman. <laughs> it is a total confusion, but that is what... That's you can what, live what for two days and, 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 uh, and they leave each other. And they you live still call other. yourself married. They are still saying they are married. They are sure. saying, uh, come on, we stay, and they call it marriage. <laughs> but what did God say? God created a woman mm -hmm. and called her a helper, the man. And God also said, yes. for this reason, yes. a man will leave, leave his father and his mother, yes. and the two will be joined, and they will no longer become two. two. So they, they, were become not one. they were not three. No, they were not three. They were not man will leave man and join another man. No. <laughs> Nothing like that. So in a, in a marriage uh, institution today, the devil is capitalizing on confusion that now, because the devil is very smart, he knows if he can destroy marriage institution, he will destroy the church. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because when you read Revelation, you discover uh, the church is, is uh, depicted as a pure woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can see uh, in creation, he created in uh, Genesis 1 26, he created him male and female. He didn't care. Uh, why couldn't God probably create so many female? so that man can uh, carry all of them. He's, he created only one. So uh, the institutional marriage is very important uh, in that God himself uh, made it himself. It is no good for man to be alone. For example, when you read um, Genesis 2, verse 28, mm -hmm. that they must be two, and they come together and stay together. So Adam names the woman, for example. He had, no, he had no problem of naming so many women 
as he is, <laughs> he had only one woman. And again, look at it this way as I was studying this. Yes. Even when you look at the animals, the animal or the birds, mm -hmm. you, for example, a dove. I came to discover a dove, if it misses, if the wife dies and I remain single. You can see how smart even the animals and the birds are. Because they have one where you don't see a group of uh, uh, birds under one person, mm. mm -hmm. under one uh, bird, for example. Yes. So in these later years, uh, we, uh, the confusion has come that it's now upon uh, uh, it has come that uh, men want to run away from God, mm -hmm. and the devil knew this very much when the, when Eve slipped off mm. from near Adam. The devil took a chance and brought a confusion. So the institution of marriage is very important uh, in that uh, scripture is equivocal that this relationship is to take place between a man and a woman. This concept is further clarified in the instruction given to the other first parents. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. He was talking to women. Two. Two. Two people. Mm. There was no third person in this uh, respect. Now, Elder, allow mm. me allow me cut you short. Yes. Now, Paul makes us understand why yes. the marriage is between a man and a woman. Okay. And and allow me take you through to the first the book of First Corinthians chapter number seven. Yes. And I'll pick verse four. Verse oh. four says, yes. "The wife does not have authority over her body, but the husband has." Yes. Okay? Yes. And, and it continues. I'm, I'm only picking some verses. And likewise, yes. a husband does not have authority over our body, but mm. the what? The wife. In the other wife. words, there are things that you cannot do for yourself. Yes. Now, if you are a man and I'm a man and we are married, and the Bible says that a man cannot do something to you, you don't have authority over. over can, another man, can another man have the same authority? Have authority now, over um, another man. Li listen, woman, listen, listen, another listen, another listen to verse 5. <laughs> <laughs> now, verse 5 says, for this reason, yes, do not deprive one another yes. except, in other words, there's something a man needs to do to a woman, yes. and a woman needs to do to a man. Yes. And except. they can only stop doing it yes. because they've agreed on two things. Yes. Number one, prayer yes. and fasting. Absolutely. And for a time, Amen. not yes. forever. Exactly. It is for a specific time, and after that specific time, <laughs> yes. you go back. The reason mm. is, if mm. you continue for a long time, mm -hmm. the devil will find a chance in your life and break that family. Yes. Thank you. Now, I think this is a wide topic that we can talk about the whole day. Yes. I just want to go back to the introduction part of it. Yes. Remember, oh. the Sabbath was a blessed day mm -hmm. and it was made holy. When God is giving us the first wedding between Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. he has also sanctified the marriage. Sure. So marriage is also holy. We should treat, yeah, it is as holy as the Sabbath. Mm. So each and every time we approach this institution, it should be respected because we are going to a holy ground. Yeah. And then too, what I got from here is mm. uh, for there to be offsprings mm. between the man and the woman, mm -hmm. it's also a blessing from the Lord. Sure. Yes, he blessed them to have offspring. And then this concludes this uh, Wednesday that it is very wrong. In fact, it is satanic eh? mm. to have the homosexual relationship. Because where are they going to have offerings that are blessed? They are not going to have it. So they will never have blessings. Yeah, so they are not blessed. Okay? And then the marriage should remain strictly between a man and a woman. No less, no more. Now, that yeah. is true. But, but again, <laughs> let me just finish by this. Yes. That we need to respect the institution of marriage. Yes. And today, today I'm married. At the rate at which we are going, Elder, at least you people have stayed in marriage for some good time. Mm. And then you can still share with us how marriage during those days was. <laughs> if you look at the life that people live today, people are married, it doesn't stay for long and they are broken up. And you they say it's a contract. If, if, it's, if it's a blessing, if, if marriage is holy, why are we making the institution you, you unholy? You, you see, marriage in the old times mm -hmm. was held at high esteem. In our tradition, for example, mm -hmm. this is where tradition sometimes is good in, uh, in uh, <laughs> the Bible. 
Uh, it is, you could not just go and marry uh, somebody you meet along the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to set somebody to go and check that person, go to the home and see how that home is, uh -huh. mm -hmm. know the character of that person. Uh -huh. Now when you come back, you come to marry this person, you already know the character of this person. Mm -hmm. But today, you meet somebody on the street corner, you are in love, you go home, and you have met a woman. The following week, that marriage is broken and it's not there. That's why now the marriage is going away. That's why sometimes I say, mm -hmm. in that area, the tradition used to do very well. But tradition is still part of us. Yes. I, I, I know I know. young people are running away from tradition. Mm. But I'm, I'm one person who still believes in very many things that was done in the past. One of them, yeah. Which I still believe. I still believe. To the Bible. Sure. Yeah. They are not contradictory. Yes. Because exactly. even when, when Abraham was sending that other gentleman to go and look for a wife for Isaac, mm -hmm. Isaac did not go alone. Somebody went on his behalf. Exactly. And those, those are things that and made families to the sustain. family they knew. Exactly. Yeah, not everywhere. Thank you. So this one can be... A subject of discussion yeah, all sure. afternoon. Eh? Sure. But in conclusion, we remember that marriage is holy mm. and should remain mm. between a man and a woman. Sure. Thank so you. as we go as we go to the next level, Pastor take us through the creation, the fall and the cross. Now God created man in his image and likeness. Mm. In the process God gave man what he was to do. Accidentally man fell into sin. The relationship between God and man was destroyed completely. And that meant that the Godhead had to do something to restore man back to the original relationship with God. And that, that, that meant that somebody had to come. And God did not want to send any other person. Whom did he send? His only son. And to bring us back to that relationship, it meant that the only son would go to the cross. Yes. And at that cross, the sin that was committed, that Whose, which, 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 which the co whose consequences was to be death was taken away from us. Mm. And you, you realize that with Christ dying meant that all our sins are taken away. <laughs> and by the way, I love what Paul says in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. What meant is our sins were taken away. And so after the fall, redemption came. Where was our redemption? At the cross. A uh, question there before you go far. Yes. Then why... Uh, God created a perfect man, a perfect woman. Yes. How come now fall comes in a perfect creation? <laughs> because because of simple reason. Yes. Disobedience. Disobedience. Even we. <laughs> yes. We only we only we only go against God's, God's will because we disobey. Mm. God says, Thou shalt not do this. Mm. We do it. Thou shalt not go this way. We go that way. And so that's what, that's what happened with Adam and Eve. Eve remained they didn't alone. Follow the instruction of of God. Exactly. Otherwise, they could not have eaten we, the fruit. We could have not even been this. Yes. And then again, elder, on that point, let me, let me warn people. Yes. <laughs> Let's forget about arguments which are not making you grow. Yes. If somebody wants to question a lot of things that are making, does not make sense, yes. forget about them. Even Paul yes. speaks to, to, to Timothy and he says, mm. be careful about fables that only brings strife. Right. In other words, there are people who will right. bring arguments not to achieve anything. Baseless arguments. Yes, only, only to win. And he feels that when you don't, you don't answer all the questions, he feels that he has won. That is not winning. That is just losing. But that is what is important for us. Let's listen to God, look at the cross where our sins were taken away, and we become right with God. Amen. Now, just uh, to add, mm. remember, God has given us the power oh. to think and to draw conclusions. Yeah. That is to make a decision. Mm. And then, Adam is placed in a garden, a beautiful one, mm. and is given responsibility because it says in Genesis 2.15, he was placed in Eden to cultivate and, and guard, guard it. Sure. He was not just to walk around, you know, do nothing. Mm. He had some responsibility. Mm. And we are also given a similar responsibility. Mm. Be it in marriage, as a woman, I'm given responsibility, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I have a responsibility to take my family to God. I have a responsibility to take care of my family. Where did these people take their responsibility? It means they neglected their responsibility of taking care of the garden. Yeah, they were not doing that. that disobedience yes. actually goes. They didn't obey the yes. instructions from uh -huh. God. And then they didn't follow they didn't what they follow. were told to follow. Mm. So let us be careful. As much as it is obvious that, you know, the character of God is love, a friend. Because this person has gone away from where he was placed, but God is still coming back.
to ask Adam, Adam, where are you? Okay? That is the character of God that shows that God is a loving God. That should be embraced amongst us as Christians mm. yes. that each and every time somebody meets me, yes. they should be able to say that this man loves God because they can see that love in me and, e and in each and everyone who says they are Christians. The love of God should be seen. Sure. So pastor, what do you have for the conclusion? I can see that time. Time is not on our side. Two we things. have only two minutes. Two things. From the creation, God revealed how much he loves us. And that love goes until the cross. Number two, marriage and creation are both holy. Let's keep holy things to remain holy. Let us not interfere with what God has made us to walk in and be very careful as we deal with God issues. Elder, do you have something? Um, um, in conclusion, I want to look at... Um, creation in general, in that uh, philosophy, which is the uh, wisdom of men, has confused the world today. <laughs> That's why we have a lot of confusion. When the Bible says uh, God created, they want to say there was a big bang. Mm. But when they are told, now explain, uh -huh. they say nobody knows. It came from <laughs> nowhere. So we need to be very careful and look at our Bible lessons and read our Bible carefully as we have read from before Kwamba, we should interpret our Bible carefully so that the devil doesn't take advantage as uh, the devil took advantage over Eve and the brought uh, sin to the world Amen. But Thank you. Uh, to the <laughs> peace be to God because uh, through Christ uh, our redemption was made sure, sure. Amen. Amen. and then finally the creator and his works are beyond their comprehension and because this cannot be explained by natural laws, Bible history is pronounced and reliable. Why? So that is what Ellen G. White is telling us in Testimonies for Christ. Whether the scientists talk, the philosophers talk, one thing remains that the creator and his work is beyond all the scientists and all the philosophers. Thank you so much. Pastor, can you please pray for us? We thank you so much, God, for allowing us to study your word. Maybe there are places that we've not made clear to your children. Now use your power as our God to make them clearer. And everything that we've learned today may bring us closer to you for the glory and honor of your name. We ask you, O oh Lord, to take care of us even as we go through the other programs of the day. Let your name be uplifted in everything we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.